Mr. Alex Tech is proudly sponsored by Audio. So DaVinci Resolve has come a long, long way in the past few years. We've got loads of new AI tools, YouTube style features, improved workflows, new pages, and of course the iPad app. So what's next for DaVinci Resolve? I don't know. I'm just a pleb with a YouTube channel. I have no inside information, but here's what I'd like to see. Here's some of the features I'd like to see added to DaVinci Resolve in future versions. And we're gonna start off talking about a very popular one, auto-generated captions. Now I know this is a popular one because I get tons and tons of comments asking about auto-generated captions within my comments here on YouTube. And you know what? I agree. It would be a super useful tool that was added to DaVinci Resolve. Now, currently, as you will probably know, you can do captions or subtitles within Resolve, but you have to do them all manually. There are some external services which you can use, but that's a round trip. You have to send off your footage, wait for it to happen, and then bring it back in. So it's all a bit of a pain. Having it done natively within DaVinci Resolve would be huge. It's also a feature which is becoming increasingly more common, kind of everywhere else. Premiere Pro can already do it, so can Filmora and CapCut. You can even currently do it natively within the TikTok and Instagram apps. It's also something which has loads of use cases. It's really useful, not just for online content creators like us. So imagine you've got a 90 minute documentary, it's all edited, it's on your timeline. If DaVinci Resolve has transcribed that in the background, you've then got a searchable time-stamped script. So if you want to see all the times when the presenter or the actor said a particular word or phrase, do a quick search, it brings it up, maybe it marks it on the timeline, and off you go. So it has huge potential and it's already a common feature elsewhere. Definitely something I'd love to see within DaVinci Resolve. Anyway, on to the next one. Voice Isolation 2.0. Now I know voice isolation already exists within DaVinci Resolve. I have made a few videos on it in the past, but whenever I do, there's always a ton of comments saying they wish there was an invert option. And you know what? I agree with that as well. So for those that don't know, voice isolation will pick up on a person's voice and then remove all of the background sounds. So you've got the voice isolated, hence the name, allowing you for nice, clean audio, get rid of all the other stuff. An invert option would just do the opposite. It would get rid of a person's voice from an audio track, just leaving the background audio. Now that could be useful if you've filmed something, you want the background audio from, I don't know, a street scene or whatever, and there's a very obvious conversation going on, you could just get rid of that just to have the clean environmental audio. Now, I also think it could be taken further. I don't know the possibilities of this, but imagine if it was almost like the face tracker, but for voices. So if you've got a clip of two people having a conversation, you say that's person one's voice, that's person two's voice. You can then bring up the levels for person one and lower person two or get rid of person two entirely and just have person one. Being able to break up the audio like that would be really, really cool. I don't even know if that's possible. Maybe I'm just talking nonsense. I don't know. I'd like to see it anyway. So there you go. There's number two. Number three, music remix. I can't deny it, this is a killer feature of Premiere Pro. If you're not familiar with Premiere Pro's remix tool, what it does is if you have a song that's two minutes long, but you need it to be three minutes long, you can remix it, which just gives you the same song, but it's now three minutes long. And of course it works the other way. If your music's too long, you can shorten it and it will just cut bits out to make the song the right length. Simple. Now this is something you can do manually and I often do in my videos, but it is kind of time consuming. You do have to mess around, find the right point and yeah, tweak it, blah, 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 blah. It's a bit of a faff. So having it done automatically within DaVinci Resolve would be really, really cool. Now sticking with music, if you need music, I highly recommend checking out this video sponsor, Audio. Because with Audio, you can get your first year of all of our music and sound effects for just $59 when you use the code ALEX70. And that license is on their website, it's always accessible and it's super easy to download. Plus, the license covers you for basically anything. YouTube, commercial work, podcasts, videos, and even video games. And probably most importantly, their music selection is awesome. They've got everything from lo-fi beats, rock, hip-hop, to classical and cinematic belters.
many of which are used by big global brands like Nike, Netflix and ESPN. This year they're adding a whole bunch more music and sound effects and will be releasing a mobile app very soon as well. So why not check them out for yourself, there's a link down in the description below. Right, sticking with another audio themed feature, automatic beat detection. So throwing a song, it automatically finds the beat of the song, marks it on the timeline, and then it makes it much easier to cut your video to the beat of the song. That's the feature. That's what I'd love to see within DaVinci Resolve. Now it's kind of interesting because that almost already exists, kind of. The basic version of that functionality actually does already exist within DaVinci Resolve. The whole thing just needs to be automated because it's all kind of manual at the moment. Let me show you really quick. So here we are on the Fairlight page. Now there's this little icon here, it's called Transient Detection, we'll toggle that on. And then over on the left, we get the same thing underneath that actual audio track, we'll toggle that on. And then it's gonna do these little lines on our waveform. So what it's doing is essentially picking up the beat. What it's really doing is it's looking for any sort of low high points, these spikes, these transients, and then it's just marking them with a little line, but it is essentially picking up the beat. Now, the problem with that is if you go to the edit page, they're not visible on here. So what you actually then need to do is to go through adding markers. Now you do have a little bit of help because you've got these little lines for them then to appear on the edit page. A few versions back, they also added something called the grid view into Fairlight. I've linked down below to a video by Dunner Did It, who explains how that works. But again, it has similar drawbacks. So as you can see, the functionality is kind of there, just not in the way that I personally would love to see it. I'd love to be able to drop a track on the timeline, on the edit page, hit a button, it adds markers on the beat, and then off you go. That does already exist within some other editing suites as well. So it's just another one I'd love to see within DaVinci Resolve. Next up, we're gonna move away from audio now, improved keyframes slash splines on the edit page. We all know that using keyframes on the edit page is simple to get started, but awkward to make fine adjustments. It's all small and fiddly and meh, it's just a bit meh, it needs a little bit of updating. The spline editor within Fusion, much, much nicer, much more flexible. Yeah, it's kind of more complicated, but it's much easier to get the job done using the spline editor than it is to do the keyframes on the edit page. Even just a cut down version of that full spline editor would be perfect. Imagine if you could even pop it out onto an external window. That'd be lovely because as it is doing it on the timeline, it's all just a bit confined. Now sticking with an almost identical theme, speed ramps. On the edit page, it's all really confined. It's tricky to do, so again, maybe having a nicer interface or a pop-out window to be able to do it, just giving you more room and more flexibility would be a winner. Next up, edit page slash cut page merger. Love it or hate it, the cut page has some really nice features. You've got the super easy timeline resolution swapping, the sync bin, smart inserts, the dual timeline view, and then my personal favorite, the source tape. I love me some source tape. It's just really, really useful. Now, some people, doesn't matter what you do, what you say, they're just not going to switch to the cut page. End of. So why not bring some of those cool cut page features over to the edit page? So then everyone's happy. So some of them, I guess they wouldn't do, maybe like the smart insert, but I don't see any reason why the source tape couldn't exist on the edit page. Maybe there is something I'm missing, but I'd love to have access to the source tape on the edit page as well. My only guess is maybe Blackmagic are concerned about making the cut page feel kind of redundant, but in my view, the cut page still has a point more so than ever now, thanks to the iPad. People are always gonna learn the cut page from the iPad point of view, so the cut page still has a point. Some people love it. You've obviously got the speed editor. It's a different place for different jobs, but I'd love to see some of those really useful features from the cut page brought over to the edit page. I also think they will continue to update the cut page at a much faster rate now, thanks to the iPad version, because the cut page needs to work as a standalone for full edits. You need to be able to basically do everything on the cut page, which currently you can't. Now they have very recently released quite a major update for the cut page. Well, I think it's major. It kind of slipped under the radar, but you can now do track level audio on the cut page on the iPad version. So you can apply audio effects to the entire track. You can do leveling, you can do all sorts, rather than having to manually set the levels of every single clip 
on the timeline, which is a right pain. So now for me, that's a massive thing. I'm actually comfortable doing a full vlog on the iPad, which before I wasn't because it took ages just trying to get all of the audio leveled and whatever else. So there you go. It's now several hours later, totally forgot to record an outro, so here it is. Thanks for watching. If you agree with me, let me know. If you disagree, let me know that as well. I'd love to know your thoughts down in the comment section below. Thanks again to Audio for sponsoring this video and the channel overall. Make sure to check them out. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time. See ya.